Hey everybody, this is Workforce Gaming. I'm Doug, along with Brad. Hello! And this week, Brad dug into his extremely extensive backlog of games <laughs> slash shelf of games. Yes. <laughs> actually, this actually this one came straight from the used game store. Nice, nice. I always like when like Family Video has a sale or something like that. You're like, wow, I have never played Lollipop Chainsaw. I'll just grab that. So uh, so Brad grabbed the, the game Syndicate. Syndicate's kind of an interesting game because it came from like a pretty well-known developer at the time, Starbury Studio. They did Chronicles of Riddick, which is an awesome game. They more recently did Brothers, and I think they did Dead by Daylight. And Dead by Daylight is a game I don't think either of us are interested in at all, nope. but I've heard good things about. Um, but Syndicate, Syndicate was kind of an interesting game. So it was from a well-known developer. It came out, kind of got like sort of middling reviews, but there were some people who were very passionate about it, saying there's some very cool stuff in it. So I'm actually not quite aware what that cool stuff is. So hopefully, Brad, from talking with you a little bit before this, you actually really like this game. Yeah, it's a pretty standard 2010 era first person shooter yeah nothing oh i I don't want to say nothing stands out but just looking at this game yeah it just looks fairly generic and i could see that where there's some sevens and some things like that and people kind of looking at and going okay whatever but playing this game it is so much fun and that's the thing Hmm. that stands out to me with this game is it's just fun and it does do some different things it does some cool things that we'll talk about but it's just one of those games that it feels good to play yeah and especially going back uh seven six i don't remember exactly when this came out years ago that's the part that i feel like you really if you have a good game that's what's going to hold up the yeah. graphics look dated you know the story feels like a story from 10 15 years ago especially having just come off god of war mm-hmm. um the story feels like okay yep this is a video game story it's kind of looted there's something there i'm sure whatever but just the gameplay is so much fun and it holds up so well and it's very tight and everything just feels perfect that's really interesting actually i have like of all the things i was expecting from this game mechanically solid was not one of them <laughs> <laughs> i feel like when you go back for old games you definitely have to have a lot of caveats and you're like well you know it's back in the day they didn't quite figure this out but apparently it's like pretty mechanically solid at the very bit now yeah it, it definitely feels like it feels like something that if if it was released now, I mean, it would get torn apart, obviously, just because story, graphics, all that stuff. But yeah. if you were to update all that, there's nothing mechanically that I would say, like, this is a glaring thing that needs to be changed. There's, mm-hmm. you know, the few minor things. And there's a few things where it's like, okay, we don't do that anymore, but that's okay. Um, but for the most part, it just it holds up. It's a good first-person shooter. It feels really cool. Um, and they do do some unique things with the gameplay as well that tie really well into the story and the way uh, characters interact with each other with how the gameplay fits into it. Yeah. Now, one, one of the things I actually remember about this, speaking of, like trying to get a little bit in the story and stuff, I know you said it's a generic video game story, but I remember one of the big selling points of this because it was based on a very much older game that's actually similar to XCOM. But the whole point of like syndicate, syndicate is that you're not necessarily a good guy. Uh, yes. So, so yeah, from what I understand is like, you're, yeah, you're actually kind of a bad guy in this situation. So what is, what is kind of like, just like the base plot, maybe not necessarily, but like, what is your character's position in this universe? So essentially the story of this universe is, is this is set decades in the future. Mm-hmm. And at this point, all of the big corporations basically run everything oh, Okay. and are, they're called syndicates, which is where the name comes from is each one's called the syndicate. Oh. And they're kind of in this like constant, um, arms race with technology of who can create better stuff and the elite people kind of have these really fancy things and Mm -hmm. the people who aren't they're called um chipped and unchipped because you get implanted chips oh that's cool so the chipped people are kind of like these elite people um and then there's the unchipped people who are not so you're a member of or you're an agent working for one of these syndicates um who basically gets the i think it's like 6.0 version of the chip the new experimental chip and you are like the best hitman they have to go and try and like figure out what's going on with these under syndicates and they're trying to take um you're trying to find one of the scientists who helped develop this new chip who's going with another corporation you're trying to kind of spy on them figure out what's going on with them and towards the later part of the game it does get much more murky into like oh okay i don't necessarily know if what i'm doing is the good thing or not and i don't necessarily know what's going on so it's set up in the beginning where you do feel like okay yeah yep this is this is what needs to happen. This is what's going on. But yep. by the end of the game, you're going, you do have that more sense of like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> They're just doing the same thing that I'm doing. But instead of being for Google, they're for Apple. So I guess the, does your does your character question these? I mean, the player you're obviously like questioning these motives throughout the game. Is your care is your player character questioning these motives as well, or it's just like this is his job. He knows what he's doing is not necessarily a good thing. 
it's more of the you know it's your job for the beginning. There is a moment, I want to say about three quarters of the way through, where it becomes blatantly obvious based on a couple things. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, obviously it's an old game, but I still don't want to necessarily spoil because it does change uh, the dynamic a lot for the last quarter of the game. But there mm. is that major shift of going like, okay, yep, there's some shit I didn't know about. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that changes some things. So, But, but uh, it changes yeah. for the character, not just the player. Yes, it changes for the character. The character oh, okay. specifically realizes, like, oh, okay, this is why these things are happening. This is why I've been pushed to do this. This is why I have some of those, like, eh, I don't know if this is necessarily the best thing, but it's my job feelings. Gotcha. I, the, thing I, the thing I like, I think some modern storytelling game has done that I like when they sort of keep things from the player, but that the um, that the character you're playing as knows this might not be necessarily a good thing. Little Nightmares, I think, does that really well. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of hoping that like maybe it's like even if like the player finds out this is oh this is a bad thing that I'm doing but the player character you're playing as is like no I still got to do this. Yeah, uh, it's nothing it's nothing to the level of little nightmares. It's more of that like you're a freelance mercenary feeling and you're oh, like okay. okay, I don't know if these guys are the best people and then you have that realization at the end of like oh no, these are not the best people. <laughs> there might be some maybe I should be on the other side. Maybe these are people are just as bad as those people. So you do get some of that murkiness towards the end. Yeah. It's nothing as blatant as little nightmares where it's like, "Oh, oops." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I guess on I guess on that note, like are are the enemies you're facing just like other corporate mercenaries and stuff like yeah. that or so, and this is where I think one of the things where the game really shines and really comes through well, the the boss fights are really, really interesting and well done. Uh, those are just against other people like yourselves for mm -hmm. different companies. So most of the boss fights are one on one, one guy or you against one guy. Maybe he has one or two like henchmen, but it's pretty much one on one boss fights in a first person shooter. Okay. Where the other person has similar power, similar guns, nothing, nothing necessarily stands out about them, with one or two exceptions who do have a couple things because of the chips and the things that the different chips can do. Yeah. Um, in between, it's just your standard first-person shooter: guards, security guards, army guys, couple mm -hmm. drones, that kind of thing thrown in. But there's a couple boss fights that really stand out. One of the first ones, and I don't really feel like I see it too much in first-person shooters, but you see it a lot in action RPGs, are where the boss has the ability to split into like six different versions of themselves. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which I don't feel like I've seen very much in first-person shooters. So you'll just be fighting him, and as you shoot him, mm -hmm. all of a sudden there's three copies. You narrow the other, you kill the other two copies, goes back to one, splits into six. So it does oh, okay, kind of yeah. that thing, which I... I after I did it, I spent some time trying to come up with another first-person shooter where that happens in, and I couldn't come up with one. Everything I went to was either JRPG, action RPG, platformer, those kind of things. Yeah, that's definitely an that's definitely an RPG or action adventure sort of trophy yeah. kind of thing. That's kind of interesting to see in a, in a first-person shooter. I think a lot of first-person shooters do. They try to go like really hard sci-fi, so that's kind of a fantasy thing that they're not willing to touch. But, yeah, and that's what I imagine. It's like techno fantasy, where they can sort of kind of justify it with the tech yeah, that very. It's going. <laughs> very, very cyberpunk, new technology, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then the other thing is, um, they don't do this as much at the early stage of the game, but because you have a chip, you have different abilities, and you can um, like hack in. I don't remember the exact term for it, but you can kind mm -hmm. of control different pieces of the environment if they're um, connected to technology. So towards the end, what you will have in these boss fights, because they are just one-on-one -on -one for the most part, but to mix it up, there'll be different things in the middle of the room. So one is like big server boxes. Okay. And you have the ability to put them down and up from cover from around the room. So you're fighting oh, in a big room, but cool. you can raise and lower these. So the or you're, the boss is on one side, you're on the other. You can lower this thing in front of you, shoot it, raise it back up, hide behind it for cover. And there's four or five of these things that are in there. What gets even cooler is as you go through the game, eventually the bosses have the same ability. So you can be hiding behind Jeez. cover. They'll lower your cover. You can hire another cover in between them all the time trying to shoot each other, which just gets kind of crazy for a few towards the end. This sounds um, like how Deus Ex bosses should work. <laughs> yes. Yes. Very much. Where there's actually some thinking involved. And, yeah. and that was a couple of the boss fights towards the end. It's a lot of like crap he's lowering that cover okay i can run to this one and i can raise this one up and then i can hide there for a second peek around yeah uh, there's a lot of cool things with that but just some of the ideas for the gameplay are really cool yeah in that sense where it's just something unique you also because you're chipped and some of these other people have chips the people that you're fighting you can hack into their chip because you have the new fancy one oh. um so you can actually persuade people uh to do things so as you're looking at them and it's like a reach, it's not a recharge thing, but yeah. you can pr pick a guy, persuade them, and they will actually, like, without everyone else knowing about it, start shooting the other guys around them. 
Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Which, again, I think that's been done before, but kind of cool. You also have the ability to just tell guys to commit suicide. Jeez. So, yeah, that was kind of what I thought the first time I saw it, too. It was like, okay, we're going this route. But because you can hack into them, they'll just, you know, take their gun, shoot themselves in the head almost Persona style, yeah. and then explode right there. So it does cause an explosion as well because you're overloading their chip when they do it. Um, so you can essentially use them almost as a grenade. This actually sounds a lot like um, PsyOps, which is kind of like a... Yes! <laughs> yes. There is definitely some elements of that in here. Another... Yeah, that was that was PS2 era, so I think that yeah. was a little bit before, before this. That. But yeah, some similar things there with just how you can interact with some of the enemies that are on there. There's only yeah. really the two ways, but... It's still one of those things that feels cool enough, and just as you play through the game, because it is short, I think it was maybe four and a half hours, maybe a rough yeah. estimate. It's those things where it's, there's just one or two, but they never get old because it is so short. And it's one of those things where it's like, as if you're if you're a reviewer back in 2010 and you see this game's five hours, you're like don't get this game, it's five hours and sixty bucks. But now it's like three dollars and five five hours. Like, hey, I can finish this in a week. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and that's exactly what it was. It's one of those things where there's always that perspective put onto it. And again, yeah. I think. Coming out when it did, and if you, I mean, if you compare it to, you know, at the time, that's Halo's big days. That's when yeah. Call of Duty was really hitting its stride with some of these things. It definitely doesn't have the production values of those. It definitely does not feel as big and epic as those. Mm. It's one of those. It's one of those good seven, eight games. This that B game that right there in the middle. That nice. I want a good first person shooter. Mm -hmm. I played Halo. I played Call of Duty. Let's give this a shot. And that's, yeah. I think, what this game was. And again, now seeing it sitting around on shelves for $3, you're not going to spend a better $3 in this game. Cool. No, that's a shoot. Dang it. Uh, I hate <laughs> when you describe these games because it's like, crap, I got to finish that. I've never played Lost Planet. There's like these like games. I never played PsyOps. PsyOps is the one I actually always want to play too. <laughs> I, PsyOps I, was good. I remember liking PsyOps. It's yeah. been 10 years, but I remember liking that one. I was a second sight kid. These ki kids will love these. Yeah. Kids will love these references. PsyOps and second sight, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm all I remember about second. I just remember the cover of Second Sight. I don't. Remember, I don't think I ever played it. I just remember the cover and being confused as to what it was. Second Second <laughs> Sight is um, is basically the same thing as Psyops, but it's made by the Time Splitters team. Oh, okay. Yeah, it has a very cool twist in it too. All right, we are workforce. <laughs> if you like us talking about vaguely old games and then referencing even older games, we're Workforce Gaming. You can follow us on Twitter <laughs> at Workforce Gaming. Subscribe to us on YouTube or wherever you listen to us. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week.